all it would take for natural selection to make a comeback in the developed world would be a lethal, contagious disease. We may be in control for the time being, but viruses and bacteria don't stay the same. They evolve too. So our future is inextricably linked to what happens to them. Professor Andrew Reid has been studying a deadly virus. It affects chickens, not humans, but it has worrying implications for our future. So I suppose the thing to realise is that we're not alone. No, I think we tend to imagine that evolution is uh, us against the environment but there's a lot of ongoing arms races between different species as they evolve and change the world of each other. In their laboratories, Andrew and his team are trying to understand what made the virus evolve, to see what it can tell us about our own future. What can these chickens tell us about diseases in human populations? I think uh, one of the lessons of the poultry industry has been that when you change things radically, the diseases that are in them often change radically as well. It's very hard to imagine that the cause of this evolution was not something to do with the intensification and the commercialisation of the chicken industry. And Andrew has a surprising theory about why the virus evolved in such a dangerous way. The most popular hypothesis, at least the one that most of the work is going on and what we're interested in, is the possibility that vaccinating the chickens against the virus has done this. That vaccinating the, the chickens has actually caused the virus to change? Yes. If you keep the birds alive with vaccines, that allows a much longer transmission period, keeps the birds going much longer. So the virus, although it's very, very hot, is not killing the bird anymore because the vaccine's stopping that. So that allows it to transmit in a way that it wouldn't have done in a pre-vaccine era. I think this is really interesting because it shows quite clearly that we can assume that we're somehow removing ourselves from natural selection by using medicine to, uh, to deal with disease. But actually what we're doing is just changing the kind of the selective landscape out there. Yeah, I, as a disease evolutionary biologist, I don't feel like I'm about to go out of work. The, things are always changing. I mean, just take drug resistance, bacteria that we thought we had under control. Lots of them now are becoming uh, multi-drug resistant. There are some bacteria now that can't be killed by drugs, known drugs, that wouldn't also kill us. But the virus's evolution might also be due to modern factory farming, with vast numbers of chickens packed in closely together. It's a change in the chickens' habitats that mirrors our own increasingly urbanised world. So do you think that pathogens like viruses and bacteria will always be there in our environment, shaping our evolution? Uh, yeah, they're always going to be there. How they shape human evolution is going to be very interesting. There's not going to be a day where we declare the war on infectious disease over. That is not going to happen. With the work of people like Andrew, we may be able to at least keep on top of infectious disease for a while, but it's hard to imagine that we'll always be in control.